In other news, closing arguments came today in the capital murder trial of Stephen Homick, with the prosecution saying Homick executed his alleged victims as if they were dogs. Homick is accused of the 1985 slayings of oil heiress Bobby Jean Tipton, her maid Marie Bullock, and delivery men James Myers. Prosecutor Brad Jervik said the evidence in the case has pointed conclusively at Homick as the killer. That man profited from their deaths. That man tried to unload their jewelry later on, and that man is sitting in this courtroom at this time, and his name is Stephen Homick. And that man is guilty of burglary, robbery with use of a deadly weapon, and three counts of first-degree murder. Defense attorney William Smith has essentially conceded Homick was a, quote, fence for stolen jewelry from the Tipton residence during those murders, but he says Homick could not have been the killer because he was with friends at the time of the killings. The jury should begin deliberations in the case tonight. Metro officials have released the name of the officer in Saturday's shooting death of a man who was allegedly assaulting a woman by stabbing her. 27-year-old David Plencher fired three shots, killing 37-year-old Steve Miller. Plencher's report says he found Miller on top of Robin Ayers, stabbing her with a screwdriver. He warned Miller to stop, and when he didn't, Plencher shot and killed him. Ayers survived the attack. Her jugular vein was nearly severed. She is stable and improving at UMC. On this blustery day in southern Nevada, there is a different wind blowing from the Midwest, one tainted with allegations of murder, extortion, and casino skimming. Reporter Luke Michaels takes a look at the Chicago mob, the new Las Vegas connection with an historical perspective. This is Chicago, a city that has many different facets to offer. Culture, sports, nostalgia, most of all, organized crime. In January of 1986, the city of Chicago was about to see a new mob boss rise to power. According to federal authorities, Joe Ferriola slipped into the position of controlling a criminal enterprise that stretched from Chicago to Las Vegas to Los Angeles. This taking place following the convictions of several top Chicago mob leaders linked to skimming Las Vegas casinos in the late 1970s and early 80s. These activities were orchestrated by this man, However, federal investigations now reveal that Anthony Spilotro was profiting himself from the ill-gotten casino money instead of sending it back to Chicago. Additionally, Spilotro did not fit the profile of a mob overseer. Instead of being low-key, Spilotro kept a high profile in the community and even ran a small-time burglary ring which became known as the Hole in the Wall Gang. The FBI believes this kind of activity played a key role in Spilotro's demise. We traveled to Chicago recently and met up with Ray Shryock, a former Chicago FBI supervisor. Used some of this money for uh, personal investments. And any time you do that with, uh, you know, the mob's money, then you always have a problem. In June of 1986, just six months after Ferriola rose to power, Spalatro, along with his younger brother Michael, were met with the ultimate mob discipline. Their badly beaten bodies were found in an Indiana cornfield buried in a shallow grave. Bob Walsh of the Chicago FBI says the message behind the Spalantro killing is clear. The message seems to be either that either that they suspect someone is cooperating with law enforcement or that they suspect someone has stepped out of line or, or someone is stealing. Um, it's their way of, of uh, maintaining discipline. The FBI says one of the last orders of business carried out by the Ferriola regime was the killing of Spilotro. And although investigators are close to solving the case, they'll never get to the main man since Ferriola died of heart problems earlier this year. In our next report, we'll show you who authorities believe is the new Chicago mob boss and we'll introduce you to the man who is suspected of overseeing mob interests in Las Vegas. Luke Michaels, Channel 13 News. Part two of Luke's report airs tonight at 11 o'clock with a murder-for-hire scheme that was never pulled off.